good afternoon and welcome to today's edition of the afternoon edition my name is isa no today we shall be focusing on issues um that gathers from kogi state and just recently you remember that i'm um, the kogi state um election that's during the general election the issue of the kogi central election was annulled and just by the supreme court yesterday um some days back and just this before this particular program you also realize that um there are several issues of court cases after election um, in the court and uh, most especially when it arises from Kogi State, there are so many discussions on how elections are conducted um, in Kogi State. We all remember in the 2019 election, 2020 election in Kogi State, it was definitely a very tough one for so many persons. Not even, even that of 2015 before um, the mandate was taken from Prince Aldo Abakar and then um, given after it, after his demise it was it was given to governor abel so there are several issues whenever we discuss issues on kogi state so ahead of the november 11 governorship election in kogi state the candidate of the Harcourt party admiral vice admiral jibril usman retired um, assured the people of kogi central when he recently visited um, that is going to prioritize the issues within that particular um, area and the former chief of naval staff told the large crowd who trooped out in their large numbers to receive him at the weekend in okeni um, that the sufferings the people are going through are what kogi west and east senatorial district are also passing through i'm um, noting that it would reverse the current state of infrastructure decadence across the nooks and crannies of the state if elected as governor of the party of the state and while urging the largely ibira populated um, senatorial district to keep faith with the accord party the retired admiral said the sufferings of the people would come to an end when it takes over from the outgoing all progressive um, congress led by governor yabello and then the governorship candidate also um stated clearly just recently in abuja uh, he called on resident of kogi state to support his candidacy in the upcoming governorship election in Kogi State. He made the call during a dinner and fundraising event organized by supporters in Abuja. And I can also vividly remember I was part of that of the reporters that covered the event of which so many donations were uh, was made to the party with respect to the November 11 election. So today we'll be discussing with some of those who were in the background giving the support to this particular candidacy come November um, 11 and his name is Comrade Samuel Danjuma is a spokesperson to the governorship candidate of the Accord party um, in Kogi. So he will be highlighting so much of what they've done and how he feels they are going to take over the mantle of leadership in Kogi State. So we'll go on a very short break and when we return we start up with a conversation. Mr. President, last Saturday, the country, would, long after we ourselves are utterly forgotten. Thank you, Mr. President. Welcome back from that mild break and I'm joining us now is um, Comrade Samuel Danjuma, who is the spokesperson to the governorship candidate of Accord Party. Um, Samuel, good afternoon and welcome to the afternoon good edition. Afternoon, my brother. How are you doing today? Fine, thank you. It's nice having you on this program and I understand that today being first of the month um, makes it roughly 10 days to go for this um, election. Yes. So how prepared is your party? We are 100% prepared for this election and when this election to win this election. Wow. So how can we win the election? What have you done so far that merits your party to win this election? One thing that my party has done so far is put the truth before everybody to mm -hmm. say it. And I've been saying this and I'm saying it today again. The way we've been asking the people of this thing is, has your life been better than it was seven and a half years ago? If the answer is no, then the choice is yours. It's now time to make an effect that change. And the changes go out on the level cast your vote and bring in a new government, someone who believes in the people, someone who believes in the masses, someone who believes in the youth, the women, the men, the elderly, the young of Kogi State, someone who believes that Kogi State deserves better. He has done it before and in his world he always says it can be done and he's going to do it again. You said he has done it before, he was never a governor of Kogi State. As the chief of Naval staff, hmm. is as good as um, having the command and all the statistics of the federation, including the FCT, where he was, superintending over them. 
he has rose, he rose through the rank before getting to that level. He was a uh, uh, flag, uh, flag commander in different um, uh, commands before he got to that level. His works, his antecedent speaks. He was the first person who brought the first Naval University to Nigeria, which is in Delta, established in Delta State. In his short time as the chief of Naval staff, I think it, it was a space of 18 months, he did a lot of things. We have the school in Okura. We have a lot of uh, infrastructure. Um, he, he put up in the naval, um, naval sector and the rest of them. I had somebody said that the kind of development that he effected while he was chief of Nawa staff it has become a yardstick that they use in judging every chief of Nawa staff to know if you're performing well or not. I asked him once, I said, sir, why were you not doing a lot of commissioning? He said, no, I wasn't doing a lot of commissioning because the cost of doing a commissioning ceremony is as good as the cost of doing a project. So instead of putting that money in Jambudi, I then invested in something else. So it's someone that has done a lot and he deserves to be governor of Kogi State and I know Kogi will be better for it. So Kogi should be celebrating because is the dawn of a new day for the people. But if, based on what you've stated, that um, he is one of the most qualified for um, contesting for the election, he campaigned in 2020 or 2019, 2018, 2019, and then he didn't win. He has been no, contesting. No, 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 so, no, no, so, he has not been contesting. What yeah. happened in 2019 was simple. You know, the party was smart in saying that um, he was not cleared. He wasn't disqualified. There was a, there was a little political wrangling within the, the APC then to see to him because the, the, the outgoing government said knew that having uh, Usman Jibri uh, retired in the race for the ticket of the party, he was going to lose that, that primary. So there was a lot of wrangling between the parties and find a way of just going through the back door to see that he was not cleared to contest in that primary. And a few days ago, he gave me a copy of the receipt copy that the party's national secretary accepted or received from him committee to screen him that showed that even what they said he didn't submit was on it but there are so many issues that um, even at, at that particular point he has not invested so much in the party for him to say that he wants to even contest um, the primaries of the APC now this is the problem with us in this part of the world I keep asking I, I ask people do we really want good governance or well, what we just believe in is just um, bring anybody there as long as we're partaking it's not about that we should be more concerned about the people mm. and this man is concerned about the people. his passion is about the people as chief of Nava staff he brought the the banda Nava post whereby to secure our waterways because before then we all know i'm from kuki and we all know what the waterways were to secure it the one in Ida and the one in Onicha also so this is somebody that has believed and has worked for his people even without having the intention of being paid back or for political gains. So it's someone that was prepared and he's prepared to deliver good governance and dividends of democracy to the people of Kogi State. So he has always been prepared. It's just that there have been a lot of wrangling within the party. That's why he had to leave and step down aside then. And another thing that made him feel at home was, okay, I have my younger brother who was contesting on the ticket of the of the PDP. So why it was going to come home in one way or other. So it's someone that believes in the Igala people, someone that believes in the people of Kogi State and is his, his slogan is unity. Is, is, unity it, is it an issue of the Igala people or is it an issue of um, his family, his younger brother, just like you stated, or the major concern of it being a Kogi State issue? What matters to His Excellency Vice mm -hmm. Admiral Risman Gibril is the betterment of Kogi State and the people of Kogi State. Ethnicity mm -hmm. is not a yardstick for him. The party, which was the highest organ of the party, did not clear him, and they were smart, like I said. They said he wasn't clear, not that he was disqualified. But if they said he was disqualified, he would have gone to court. Because someone who was from second lieutenant, who was the one of the best cadets, graduating cadeting students in his time in uh, 24, 24 court, and rose to that level, you, get, you won't tell me that he doesn't have a certificate. No. He had everything that he needed to be governor. And but the party, like I said, played some game. See, everybody I've spoken to from Kogi, both Igala, both Yo, the Kaba, the Okun speaking part of Kogi still and the Ibiras, everybody has told me that the most qualified of all of them contesting is Vice Admiral Arisma Jibu. Then the question is, so why are we not? But don't you think they may be telling you because you are a major pusher for Vice Admiral Arisma no, 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 no. See, when people, when people speak out of their hearts, mm. you know that these people are speaking, they are not being induced, they are not being cajoled into saying it, they are saying it from their heart. They said, yes, we know he has done a lot of things. While we're, we're in the palace of the, the traditional ruler of, of uh, Koton Kerfi, he said the same thing. And so many other traditional rulers were visited. They have always said that you are very qualified to be governor of Kogi State. And we pray 
then you get it. So if it comes to qualification, he has it. If it comes to being prepared and ready, he has it. And if you watch, he has gone, he has canvassed all the 21 local governments of the state, going around, conversing with them, seeking for their votes. But these are similar things that even other parties have done. They've gone around all the 21 local government of the party in the district, the senatorial zones, and then definitely they seem to be on the same platform. But then when they talk about the issue of um, is um, credibility in terms of what he has achieved over the past few uh, over the past years, he also tend to ask other political um, juggernauts in the state. And then they tell you, even them, they've also achieved so much uh, during their, life their lifetime. And uh, at the same time, again, the issue of contesting election in Kogi State, people say it is not just about the identity of a person, but how can the people, the voters, the electorate, give him the necessary support? Does he have that base? He has the base. He has the base. And who are the people? They are people like us. Mm. We are talking to our people, we are talking to our friends, we are talking to our brothers, we are talking to our sisters, we are talking to our parents, that this time we need a change. In my words, in other interviews I've granted, I always say that this election on the 11th is a referendum between the good and the bad, between good governance mm. and maladministration for the past seven, seven and a half years. I think Kogi ordinarily should be one of the richest states in the Federal Republic of Nigeria because we are blessed with over 13 solar mineral resources in Kogi, whereby resources to develop the state wouldn't have been an issue. But one thing Kogi has lacked for the past 32 years of this creation is good leadership. And that's what my principal, Vice Admiral Risman Jibrin, is bringing to the table. Quality leadership. He has been tested, he has trusted, he's someone that has, like I said, he has done it before and he can do it again. But do you still have that same kind of trust for politicians? Because on several counts, we've had politicians tell you that everything that is black seems to be white. Um, just like stating that um, Kogi State have over 30 minerals, um, have the um, Ajaokuta steel, the coal and the rest of it, like that they are going to turn it all around. Don't forget that we have politicians in the past and we are still having them now and they are going to be on the ballot on the November 11 election. Um, do you still have that major trust that he can be the one to change the tide for Kogi State? Yes. Yes. I have the belief, I have the trust, I believe in his ability, his capacity, his capability to deliver the dividends of good, dividends of democracy for Kogi State. If you, if you have gone through his blueprint, he has said it, how is he going to do this? How is he going to affect all this? They are all there. He has said it that He's going to have what we call the PPP, Public-Private Partnership, whereby first thing he wants to do is secure the state. When the state is secured, foreign investors will come in and invest in the state. He's someone who has traveled far and wide. He's exposed, he's advanced, he has, he has friends all over the globe, and bringing them in will be very easy. I've, I've had discussion and conversation with other people, and they've said, if he becomes governor, Kogi will be better for it. Like I said, has he done it before? Yes, he has. As chief of Nava staff, he did. I told you, he brought the first you know, Nava University to, to Nigeria, which is in Delta State. We have the school in Okura. We have the Nava base in, 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 in Kogi and in Omicha and the rest of them. So many. There are a lot of things. As I speak to you, over 450 students from Kogi State are on his private scholarship that he pays their school fees to the university level. He has no, I asked him, why were you not making this? He said he was not doing it for political gain. He was just trying to give back to the society. And like I always tell people, my principal is not contesting this election because he's hungry, he's not contesting it because he wants to get married to a new wife or he's looking for money to buy cars. No. By the social grace of God, he's blessed. As a pensioner, as a former chief of army, he's never staff, all these are taken care of. But at this time, what he, he what he wants to do is how do I better the life of my people? If I go back home today now, the age of my father will say, I'm dead. What does he mean is he's coming to ask you for arms. There's hunger in the land. There's hunger in Kogi. Your father's mate is frustrating to you because he feels he can get something for you. These are the things my, my principal wants to change. He wants to give man back that his dignity. Bring man back to the state. But since this salary will be a thing of the past. I saw somewhere today somebody wrote and said, before now, a level 8 officer of Kogi State was earning about 54,000. As we speak, they're earning 24,000 on percentage rate. That's what, what, what's, a, what's a demonizing situation is happening. So, Admira is coming to give a new leave. As a former civil servant who retired, he knows what it takes. He always says he said the army never owed him for one day. And he's not going to hold salary for one day. From the first day he gets into office, before his first hundred days in office, the issue of percentage salary will be eaten of the past. The water problem in Lokota will be sorted out. The road between Lokota and Ganaja will be sorted out. The budget side and every you go it's as soon as he wins and he gets into office, could you become an, a construction site from every angle? But people have also stated that um 
he was a former chief of naval staff getting to that apex um, is something that is very very good and very worthy not every um not everybody that passed through the NDA gets to that particular rank. And he said, well, is this not a better time for him to also rest? Now, when things are not going the right way, it's mm -hmm. time to call your father and say, Daddy, this thing is not going well. You are more experienced, you are more educated, you are more exposed than I am. Like I always tell those of my own constituency, the youths, I tell them, I said, you can have a trailer load of new clothes, but you can't have a trailer load of rags. What does it mean is, you can know innovation and the rest of them, but you, don't, you can't be wiser than your father. At this point, if everything was going well, he wouldn't have put his heart in the ring to contest for the government. But he's there because things are not going well, and he needs to put things in the, right, the right perspective and the right, right way. That's why His Excellency is there. There is a need for him. If not, he wouldn't have. Now, it's like, like you said, he would have been resting, but he can rest. When his children are hungry, he can rest. When his neighbors are hungry, he can rest. When his brothers and sisters are hungry and are crying, and I called him to, to let, me, let me make it clear today. His Excellency did not wake up one morning and said, I want to run for governorship. The people of Ogisi looked and said, Sir, we need you. Come and rescue us at this time. And that's why he's in the race. And he's going to deliver on the promises he has made for the people of Ogisi. So, like I said earlier, the people of Ogisi should rest assured that after casting their vote for accord, His Excellency Vice Admiral Usman Jibri on the 11th and he, he wins this governorship election, a new dawn, a new leaf will be. Will begin in Kogi State and Kogi State will be, will be glad for it. What is in this blueprint? Beautiful. First, security. Now, security, how is it trying to tackle security? When I ask him, like I always say in every fallout, security is this field. As a member of the Defense Corps, was once uh, commandant of the Defense, uh, Defense Intelligence uh, Agent, uh, Academy here in Abuja and the rest of them. So he knows what to do when it comes to this field. And first thing he wants to do is. He said, Sam, when I get these young boys engaged by creating employment for them, automatically I've reduced the number of those who will be available for crime and criminality. The, it, it is said, and, and I don't mind, the devil's workshop. So first thing is, create employment. Agriculture is going to diversify the agricultural sector. It's going to, there's what we call um, the economy of the state. Um, agriculture is going to do what we call mechanized farming. Mm. Whereby they're going to be modern equipment for farming because the real money is when you do the commercial you engage in the commercial farming Kogi is blessed with vast land so we have cashew and the rest of them cash crops in Kogi so he's going to he's going to um do engage proper mechanized um, farming then he's going to also create incentives for farmers whereby uh, farmers associations and the rest of them will be able to assess those money for their daily um Needs in the, and that is going to also make um, what we call them um, uh, fertilizer available for them. There's going to be subsidized uh, fertilizer for them. There's going to be what we call catchment areas whereby we buy because most times the issue is not the production, it's at the harvest stage we don't have what to preserve. So there's going to be what we call by buying back some of those farm products. Then there's going to be a lot of um, PPP where uh, private individuals are going to come and set up industries and uh, for, to refine this, this uh, farm products to finishing goods whereby. Is going to also create employment, like I said earlier, for the young people in Kogi State. That's one aspect. He's going to look at the women. He said he's going to give 50 million each to each of the 21 local governments, whereby it will be like a trust fund for the women. You go to assess fund for your daily petty business at the end of the month. And as more as, as he sees the improvement in that uh, uh, scheme, he's going to increase it from 50 upward. Therefore, his government is going to be all inclusive. It's going to be an all inclusive government. Then when it comes to education, I, am, I, 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 I want you to go to Kogi and check. You see that the, the uh, regional sector in Kogi has collapsed. The primary and the secondary education in Kogi is, is, um, is a shadow of itself. And what does he want to do? He wants to come and overhaul the educational se se sector. Build schools, modern schools with modern facilities. facilities. The teachers are they were trained and retrained and properly taken care of. Then there's more employment of teachers, qualified teachers. There's going to be incentives for teachers so that they can meet the basics of life. That's another aspect. In Kogi, we all know that before now, we used to have this um, one occupier basis. This is a state that comes up, the 200,000 estate and the rest of them. It has stopped for the past seven and a half years. When he gets into government, he's going to do that so that civil servants will be able to own houses of their own at the time they are done with uh, this thing. Their salary and their welfare will be taken care of. Uh, someone was telling me that the last time employment was major, major employment was done in Kogi State was from the days of Aldo, that was like 2003. 
up to date, there have not been major employment in the state. Work, work okay, so be before, is be before you continue, because I have several questions with respect to um, all these items you've listed from uh, agriculture um, to education to the issue of securities and the rest of your life. But then these are questions that definitely will come just after this break. So we'll be going for a very short break now, and then uh, we've been discussing with um, Comrade um, Samuel Adejo, uh, who, Denjuma, sorry, I mean to say, uh, who is a spokesperson to the Accord Party governorship candidate. And definitely, there are several issues that we need to discuss and we need to be cleared about before the November election, and he's here um, to give answer to those questions. So let's go for this break. Fearless country, there are about 40 million of us, and our territory here um, to show support and also push your candidacy for you to win the November 11 election. Yeah. What is the what are the possi um, possibility of you uh, winning the election? Well, thank you for having me. Like you know so well, to have to be a sellable candidate, you must have a background. And once you have a background, you can easily be assessed. If so far sure. To the extent that the facts speak for themselves. Without me saying a word, if you place certain criteria and you look at all the candidates, you don't need to be told that I am the worthy candidate. Looking back at my background, my experience, the position thus reached, and what I'll be able to re do to my people, which I know all I've done so far may have impacted positively on the livelihood of my people. I'm a person that will not talk too much, but I must accept that my people are going through hell and they needed to be rescued. When you say that your people are going through, which of the people? Is it the people from your region or of the people of the state? Excellent question. Well, I am referring to Kogites. I detest the idea of tribal politics. Hence, I coined my movement as Kogi Unity Agenda. Like you know so well, the politics of Kogi is looking polarized. And to that extent, one can safely say that there are three main political parties in Kogi State today. You have the Igala Party, Okum Party, and the Bira Party. Now they needed somebody that will come forward and unite these tribes so that there will be no friction, so that we can live harmoniously. And to that extent, so that we can develop the state for the benefit of all. And using my background, you will note that there is no single tribe that is not in the military. And because I had the opportunity to head the service called the Nigerian Navy, you should know that I must have been brought up to accommodate all tribes, all shades of opinion, and move the state forward. So I am not a tribal leader. I am a man for the job and for the state. Okay, you are your question. Um, when you are seen of this, what would you do first for the people? First for the people. If you have been to Kogi State, it is very, very easy to say that the first thing we need to do is to address the insecurity as we have faced or we are facing at the moment. To that extent, what do you do? I can tell you vividly that the level of banditry, toggery, political assassination, which all these have become the norm in my state. With my background and my training and exposure. And to that extent, I am a security expert. Don't you think that within a few weeks, all that could be addressed? 
Welcome back from the break, and I'm still with us here. Is Comrade Samuel Adejo um, Denjuma, who is the spokesperson to the Accord Party governorship candidate of Kogi State. Um, if you remember, um, the Kogi State governorship election will be coming up November 11, and that's roughly 10 days um, from today. Our Kogi State will be heated again with respect to who is going to lead um, the state for the next four years. And just like you know, also that um, just recently, um, several issues that has to do with Kogi State has been pumping up, um, be it on social media, be it on the traditional media, and then in other news bulletin, you've been hearing issues on Kogi State. But today, we are focusing on the Accord Party candidate and um, his vision for a better Kogi State. And with us, just like I told you, is Comrade Danjuma. So, uh, before the break, you were listing so many activities that he is going to do. And um, just um, before before um, they return to us in the studio here, people are also listening to what are his plan for Kogi State. Um, he has stated it clearly. One major issue I know we always put at the front burner is the issue of um, security, um, which is key for, to the development of the state. But then during the course of your conversation, even still on that particular aspect, there is going to create jobs for people. But if you look back to issues of security, we understand that so many persons have been involved with the issue of insecurity in Kogi State um, locally. But there, are, there was a time that people were also coming from different states um, to come and also attack or cause mayhem in the state. How can we address that also? Beautiful. Um, when I talked about security, I only looked at one aspect of it, mm. like I said earlier. Now, I, I can remember maybe Lowell in a speech uh, on the fundraising day. Let me just uh, go back just a few days ago. He said in Delta, when he got to Delta, there was insecurity. And he had to deploy technology to be able to solve the issue of insecurity in Delta State. And that um, gave him almost a medal from the governor because the governor was so impressed because he was just coming and in a few days he was able to put um, insecurity in Delta to rest. And how did he do it? Like I said, technology. They were able to track kidnapping immediately. He said immediately you kidnap and you request for ransom, they are coming for you. Now, he has always talked about um, um, uh, uh, artificial intelligence. There are a lot of, in, in the, the world is as developed. For, um, I, I started with the employment part of it is because if you don't even have those to engage, mm. you won't have uh, those to even carry out the crime in the first place. Yes. He's going to deploy artificial intelligence in Kogi State, whereby before it happens, he, he maps it in the mob board. I told you he was the commandant of the Defense Intelligence uh, Academy. Um, he's a member of the Defense of the, of the Intelligence Corps. Mm. He's a member of the National Security uh, Council of the Federation, as a former chief minister for life. So it's somebody that when it comes to intelligence gathering, he, he will. See, I, I think one the easiest part of his governorship will be the issue of security. But so far, has he been able to put that um, into practice? Because you know, Kogi State have been yes. facing issues of insecurity. What role has he played in, uh, in making sure that those things are involved started? in the security architecture of Kogi State, in and out of office? I told you about the Banda uh, outpost to secure waterways. I told you about the. You no, know, with respect to Kogi State now, yes. there are so many political issues, political toggery, issue of um, attacks, kidnappings, killings, and the rest of no. What has he done? If you if you if you if you watch all through the the campaign still today, we have not been attacked for once. Mm. And why is because my principal values the life of his supporters. He values the lives of the people of Kogi State, and he values their properties also. And the first as, uh, assignment of, of the chief executive officer of the state is what to secure the lives and property of the citizens of the state. Now, what he does is before we leave for every outing, he does is intelligence gathering. Then he informs all the security um, apparatus within the state that on this data will be here. So it's the unknowns nice on the on those security um, agencies hmm. to give the leader security to safeguard the lives of his, 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 his supporters and to safeguard the lives of, of and safeguard their properties. Then another thing you do if you watch my principal you don't sit out around him. Not because he hates them, but because he believes in quality people. He believes in Kogi deserves the best. So you don't see towns. I'm not, I'm not sure in any of the videos you have seen anywhere we are going and we are carrying boys, we are carrying sticks and hitting people and, and doing all that. No, he doesn't believe in that. He believes that human dignity should be respected. My principal believes that people should be known for the right thing. He believes in quality. He believes that things should be done the right way. And he has been able to 
you navigate. We were in Kotun Kalifi. Nothing happened in Kotun Kalifi, but the other people went to Kotun Kalifi and we all know what happened in Kotun Kalifi. Who are the other people? Please. Um, the thing is, uh, I'm, not, I'm not here to... I'm not here to glorify any other... No, I'm not saying you should glorify, but I want to know what, what, what will happen in Kotun Kalifi. Kotun Kalifi, yeah. the SDP candidate was in Kotun Kalifi. Okay. And we know the young lady who lost her life as a result of that, of that incident in Kotun Kalifi. And a lot of people were injured and their and properties were damaged in Kotun Kalifi. But we went to Kotun Kalifi. And why? Because we are law-abiding people. But the APC also say that they are law abiding because so far so good. Um, they've not had any major attack during the course of their campaign and the rest, including the PDP, including the ADC. Now, we have about um, eight contestants for these um, elections. elections. There are only two people who are on each other's route, the SDP and the PDP. And the question boils back that they both know what they have not told the people of the state the secrets behind mm. or the, the, the cost of their, 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 their troubles. Because, see, the SDP candidate was called by the sitting governor in the night, tied out to the primaries, and he was given clearance to go pick the phone because he was given, before then, in the past uh, two years ago, he, we all knew when he did the ceremony and handed over his staff to him, pointing that he was going to be the next person to be governor. I think along the line, that agreement you know, go down well. And that's why both of them are on each other's truth. And that's why you can see. So if there's anybody that should be, should be if we are more, should be more concerned, should be more concerned about this because they don't even value the lives of the people of the state. They are just concerned about their own interests. But my principle is someone who believes in the people, who believes that things should be done orderly. Your principle is a former chief of naval staff yes. and um, well experienced man in security very, aspect very. and rest. but it is a different field now we're talking about politics uh, where we have about eight political parties with four um strong candidates um the candidate of the adc is well known in his region and his area and then you also have dino malai who is also well known and then um, you have um the apc um party in, that is being headed by um, usman Ododo, mm -hmm. and then you also have your own candidate and then that of the sdp who is the major threat to your Candidates, we have no threat. Presently, you have no threat. We have no threat. See, in my language, there's what we, we say. Um, um, I think I have to go home a bit. I mean, you add that all, and what does it mean indirectly? Is a good product mm -hmm. sells itself. We have no threat because we, are, we we want to do things differently. We went for the best, so without blemish, and we said this is the person we want, and this is the person that will change the course of things in Cookie State. So we have no threat. And that's why you don't see us having issues with anybody. We want things done orderly, and that's why we believe in INEC, and we believe that INEC is going to conduct a free, fair, and credible election, that everybody at the end of the day will be happy after the elections. So we have no threats in Kogi State. As far as we're concerned, there's no threat. So in the Kogi East, uh, where um, the SDP candidate is from, and then the NNPP candidate is from, there is no threat even in your we own region? We don't have a threat. Like I said earlier, mm. this election is going to be a referendum between light and darkness between good governance and maladministration. Now, the same people who today are claiming to do the Igala agenda yeah. were the same people who went after the same Igala course in 2019. And in 2015, in 2015, Prince Abaka won the election before he died. Now, it, was, it would have been normal to, to allow his deputy finish their tenure. But no, these same people went against the Igala course and brought in the present administration. They were, they were all good friends up till the, the primary, a few, few days or few weeks to the primary. So, if really there's anything, they, are, they should be, the, they, are the, they, are the, they are the ones not even uh, concerned about the people of the state. But my principal has none of this record. He has done the best he can do for the people of the state. We in Ejema a few weeks ago, and in Ejema, right there after speaking to them, because that's where he grew up, he gave scholarship to 10 young people going to Kogi State University. So this is somebody that believes in the people, he believes, he is not just, he's, he, my principal is a national figure. He's not tied by ethnicity, he's not tied by religion, he's not tied by sentiment or emotions, he's concerned about the betterment of the people of Kogi State. And that's what matters, not religion, not, so in the East we have no threat. And the people of Kogi East are beginning to know the truth. I've had conversations with them in the course of our, of our, our, our town hall uh, engagements and the rest of them, they were like, we have this kind of a product. And you're asking us to go the other way around. They're beginning to know the truth. First, who doesn't last forever? The people of the city are beginning to understand that this man is who means well for them, and this man is the person that's going to take them to another level. So, even in the East, we don't have a threat. Because, like I've kept, I keep telling them, the truth is unveiling every day. People are beginning to know who truly really cares, who is really, who really, who really, who really concerned about. But people are also concerned that uh, in some of your political rallies, the number of persons that comes out seems not to be as much as that of the other political parties. 
in 2011, hmm. Wada came a few months to the election. Uh, the few rallies. He was governor. Why? Because he was a good product. We're not interested in hiring crowds. We're not interested in making noise. We're interested in telling people the truth. But this I, crowd will also be the ones to vote. The crowd, are, see, do you know, one thing people don't understand is, mm. I've been in this political circle for a longer time to understand the, the intrigues in the political circle. There are some people who wear the t-shirt of the PDP in the morning, mm. wear that of APC in the afternoon, mm. wear that of SDP in the noon, mm. and wear that of Accord at night. There are such people. But the true voters are the ones that we are engaging. We are we're telling them, we are playing the card for them. Because the reason why I asked this question was that even on that day when there was a fundraising, fundraising sorry, I mean to say, um, I try as much as possible to have, I had several interviews, but then some people seem not to want to stick their neck out and then say this is where they are. You know, um, most of the people in Kogi um, survive based on who is in government. Mm. Some of them have best interest. Policy is all about interest. Some of them have best interest, and they're trying to be careful. But I, we, from from this week going forward, it should be clear uh, for you to stand and show us who do, where do you belong. People are sticking. I am sticking. I have a lot of people who are sticking their neck. Why that place? Uh, where you felt is is that way? Because some of us are in the village canvassing, mm. and we felt there was no need everybody coming back just because of the fundraiser. A lot of people are sticking their neck for His Excellency. And there are people in the rural area, in the grassroots. There are the people sticking, because the truth is, he's just asking them a simple question, will you take a plate of rice? And so for the next four years, it's better you teach me how to fish than give me fish. Mm -hmm. And what is my prayer principle bringing, but it's, it's coming to teach them how to fish, where they can be able to feel fed for themselves and for their family. Get them engaged, not by dashing out peanuts. And after the election, you can't even go close to their, their gate, stop more of talking to them. He's going to run an open poli open door policy. Someone who is accessible, someone you can ask, you can, you can talk to. So if it's about um, people sticking their neck, a lot of people are sticking their neck. Thank God, even in that place, for somebody to have given that kind of, one person to give that kind of donation he gave, that's somebody who believes that this man can actually do this. And it's somebody, like I said in his word, it can be done. Kogi states can be better, and it will be under the watch. But the donation that was made um, that day by the engineer, uh, I've forgotten his full name, Frank, uh, Frank uh, with uh, one billion naira, was a very huge, but would that be enough for him just to round it up? The, the truth is, mm. a lot of people... If you can do that in 30 seconds. A lot of people don't want to don't want to be... As I speak to you, there are a lot of donations that have come in between that day and today. Okay. So donations are still coming, and they are coming, and there will be enough for the election. Okay. So, so what's your last to message to the, to the voters in Kogi State? The first thing is I'm, I want to talk to those of my constituents, the youth. Hmm. Please, let's conduct ourselves orderly. We don't need to kill each other for any election. We don't need to fight. We don't need to have enemies because we are brothers. Hmm. After this election, an Igala man, an Igala man, an Ukuman, we are still brothers and we remain brothers. And to those from the eastern part, we don't need to kill ourselves. Because as we speak, 13 people are dead already. 13 young men. Please, we don't need to kill ourselves. Come out on that day. Conduct yourself orderly. Go by the rule. Vote for the candidate of your choice. And if you believe in good governance and you want the betterment of Kogi State, I advise you vote for the candidate of our court party. That's how I respond to you. And okay. will be better for Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm Comrade Danjuma um, Adejo Sama. I'm taking it from the reverse direction this time around. It's nice having you. And you've actually um, did well um, by giving us answers to some of the questions we've raised and cleared our doubts on why you feel that he should be um, the next governor of Kogi State. We wish him the best Thank and we pray that as he wins um, and favors all, but everybody in Kogi State. So this is how far we can go today on the afternoon edition discussing with the spokesperson to the um, candidate of the Accord Party and that's Vice Admiral Usman Jibril retired. Um, facing the November 11 election is an 18 that definitely all Kogite will want to see we will be the next person to champion their cause. My name is Isanu. This is how we can go today on this edition.